Hello, 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 hello. It is Stories for Kids with Morel podcast, and Birdie is with me. Say hello, Birdie. <coughs> Again. <coughs> hello, Stories for Kids with Morel podcast, and as ever, I've got my story bell to ring. Ring a ding, <coughs> ding a ding, on a ding. <laughs> Three dings. And so, I've got a story to continue, don't I? I'm sure you'll say to me, yes, yes, you do, Morel, yes. And what's the story? The story that I need to continue is about the raccoon and the bees. The raccoon and the bees. And I thought to myself that I would like to tell you something, just in case you don't know. I'm sure you do, but just in case. About a queen bee. Yes, have you heard that? I'm sure you have heard of bees, beehives, but have you heard about a queen bee? What is a queen bee? Well, I will tell you. A queen bee isn't a baby bee. A queen bee is a adult bee, a female adult bee. And the queen bee lives in a colony. Colony, C-O-L-O-N-Y. The queen bee lives in a colony. Or we can call it a hive, H-I-V-E. The queen bee lives in a hive of honey bees. Oh, the queen bee has fully developed reproductive organs. Yes, the queen bee has fully developed reproductive organs. And she's usually the mother of most if not all, of the bees in the beehive. Queens are developed from larvae. L-A-R-V-A-E. And they're selected by worker bees and specially fed in order to become mature. Oh, so there's something there about queen bee. And... There is normally only one adult mated queen in a hive and the other bees will usually follow and protect her. They like to protect the queen. They protect the queen bee. So the other bees like to protect their queen bee. All right. Well, I hope you find that of some value to learn about a queen bee. Yeah, the queen bee is a female adult bee and there's just usually one queen bee in the hive. All right, now let me continue with the story. Okay, now... And I'm sure Birdie liked also to hear about the queen bee. Did you, Birdie? Yes. <coughs> yes. <coughs> okay, fine. Now, remind you, I like to remind you about the story. So, I think I might have said something like, um, now you meet me tomorrow and I'll take you over with me. Meet me by the big oak tree in the corner of the woods just after noon tomorrow. I must leave you now because I'm going fishing tonight with some of the other coons, that's the raccoons, that live near me. And then the raccoon said, Goodbye, until tomorrow. And Cooney went away with a chuckle. Okay, because he's made a plan, isn't he? Now, let's continue with a story about the raccoon 
and the beef. So, the next afternoon, Chuck arrived at the big oak tree in the corner of the woods. But there was no Cooney waiting for him. He walked around the tree several times to make sure and then mounted a nearby stump. The woods were very quiet save for the droning of insects and the sun that shone between the leaves beat down very hot. Before Chuck knew it, he had fallen asleep at his post. When Cooney came trotting up and saw Chuck perched there fast asleep, he said to himself, what a fine chance to play a trick. So, he picked a long blade of grass with a feathery end and crept up from behind so carefully that not a twig cracked. When he was within arm's reach, he tickled poor Chuck way up his nose. Chuck waked with a start and bounded right into the air, landing at some distance off. He had no idea that someone had played a trick on him. What ails you, Chuck? Cooney cried, running up with a friendly, anxious expression on his face, for Chuck was almost sneezing his head off. Guess a a, a nasty old fly crawled up, up my nose. Chuck managed to get out between sneezes. Oh, too bad, old chap, said Cooney giving him a friendly pat on the shoulder. Come along with me and we'll get some honey and that will make you feel better. Still sneezing, Chuck trotted off with Cooney across the fields. When they reached Farmer Jones's barnyard, everything seemed very quiet and sleepy around there. Is that where the honey is kept? whispered Chuck, as Cooney took a peep in at the barn door. No, answered Cooney. I just wanted to see if the double buggy was there. It is not. And now I feel perfectly sure they have all gone to town and taken the dog with them. Then they felt quite safe. Very boldly they walked around to the gate in the yard where Cooney said the honey was. Hurrah! he cried. Someone has left the gate open for us. They must have been expecting us. I have never been here before, said Chuck. What are all those square white boxes along the fence? Oh, those are called beehives, Cooney answered a little proudly to think he knew so much. The honey is kept inside. But how do we get at it? asked Chuck. Those little holes in front look hardly big enough for me to get my paw through, much less my head and shoulders. Oh, (laughs) laughed Cooney. How stupid you are. You just go up and knock very loudly at the door. And when a bee comes out, you ask if he hasn't something to eat for a poor fellow 
who has come a long way and is very hungry and tired. But should he pay no attention to you, hit him with your paw. This will frighten the others, so they will bring out all the honey you wish and leave it there on the ledge for you. Come on, I'm hungry, aren't you? Am I? said Chuck. Well, I should say so. He was licking his jaws in memory of the little feast he had had the day before. Cooney looked at Chuck out of the corner of his mischievous eyes. But Chuck never guessed he was laughing at him when he added, I'll take a hive at this end. You can have one at that. Let's hurry. Chuck was in a hurry indeed. Already, he felt sure he could smell the honey. So he left Cooney and ran towards the hive at the end of the row in high spirits. But before he knocked on it, he stopped and looked back. He wanted to see how Cooney was getting along. Now, Cooney did not really want any honey. All he wanted to do was to play a joke on his friend. But it very often happens that the practical joker gets the worst of it in the end. And as Cooney stepped up to the hive and pretended to knock, he put his paw right down on top of the queen bee whom he did not see sunning herself on the ledge. The queen bee has no sting, you know, you do know that. And the queen bee cannot defend herself. I mean, she is by no means helpless, however. She has, in fact, an entire army ready to fight for her at a moment's call. When the other bees heard their queen's cry for help, they all rushed out of their hives and began at once attacking Cooney. They buzzed angrily around him and burrowed into his fur until he rolled over and over on the ground, doubled up with the pain. This was what Chuck saw when he turned around to find out how Cooney was getting along. He grabbed up a big stick, but he soon saw there was nothing he could do to help. He also saw that the bees in their mad attack had left their fort unguarded. So he stuck his paw inside the door and broke off a good-sized piece of comb full of nice yellow honey. Then he started for the woods again as fast as he could. Cooney did not see Chuck as he shot past him a few minutes later trying to shake off the bees that still clung to him as he ran. And a few days later, when they met down by the brook, Cooney pretended not to see him. Howdy, hello Cooney, Chuck called out in his cheery way. 
Where are you going so fast? Well, I never, he added, noticing Cooney's bumps and bandages. Have you been in a fight? Just a little fuss with Farmer Jones's dog. He's twice my size and a regular bully, Cooney answered, as he brushed by Chuck in such a hurry that he did not hear the latter call after him. Say, old friend, meet me by the big oak tree in the corner of the woods tomorrow. I will go after some more of that good honey. It was Chucks' turn to laugh now. For he laughs best who laughs last, you know. (laughs) Oh, Chuck has got back on Cooney. Poor Cooney, he set a trap for Chuck. But it didn't quite work out as Cooney thought it would. Because, of course... The queen bee. He attacked the queen bee. And if we attack the queen bee, all the other bees will come out and they will fight to protect the queen bee. (sighs) Okay, I hope you enjoy the story and also that you learn something about the queen bee. You could try to do a poster. You could try to write a song or write a poem about Cooney and Chuck and the bees, and especially the queen bee. I'm going to come back. This is Morel, and I will be back with another story. I'll be back with another story. Here comes Birdie. Birdie comes to say bye-bye. Bye-bye, Birdie. Oh, a bit slow today, Birdie. Bye-bye again, Birdie. Okay, fine. All right. So, Stories for Kids with me, Morale Podcast. I will be back soon with another story. Be good. Be very good. Okay, take care. All right. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye.